In the second of this two-parter, I'll present how Dave Eggers' The Circle has been seen as an update of 1984, one that served as a reflection of our current era of ubiquitous computing and a more ambient surveillance paranoia surrounding it. These two works will be framed here as two models of governance, one being a form of space-bounded discipline and the other a form of transpatial control, which I'll get into in a moment. Further, I'll complicate what seemed to be an implied theme until now that discipline is repressive, oppressive, or anti-human. Because we should have some disciplines, right? Imagine someone undisciplined to the traffic rules. I'll conclude by indicating how surveillance could be understood, and perhaps how the concept should be subordinate to higher perspectives. Egger's novel is set in the near future, revolving around one mega corporation, The Circle which can be seen as an amalgamation of the real-life GAFA corporations, that is, Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, and in the Sinosphere, Debat corporations, Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent. This organization is a monopoly that covers all data-related services and the design of consumer devices, eventually operating at a global scale. It owns and manages both the hard and soft infrastructures for those operations, which, although Eggers did not specify, may include the entire infrastructural ecology, from satellite systems, data centers, fiber optic networks, urban scale sensors, and personal devices, to the software platforms, which may include the capture, storage, sorting, and the using of user data. In short, the circle represents a total, coherent, thus paranoid, ideal image of present-day big tech. Here I'll consider this corporation as one novum. For the applications and devices designed by the circle all cohere into one omnipotent and omniscient model. In other words, what is interesting is the model itself, which is a composition of designs, practices, and infrastructures. The Circle is essentially offering a universal, all-purpose social media platform with online wallets and banking functions tagged on. This platform was named TrueU. We can imagine the TrueU platform as an amalgamation of present-day internet forums, Facebook, Twitter, Apple Pay, online banking, and so on. Which means, effectively, everything about a person, data of their histories, preferences, relations, biometrics, and so on are compiled in one's unique profile on the platform. Such is the basic framework by which other devices and applications are mere extensions, such as the concealable sea change sensors, and of course the smartphones. In short, the Circle constructs a planetary scale sensing and computing system that envelopes every aspect of life. This platform's key feature is that each profile is designed to be transparent and public, meaning everyone's history and activities are constantly visible for both the circle and other users. In the book, this transparency successfully eliminated all possibilities of identity theft, transactional fraud, and online trolling. These effects quickly brought the platform to universal adoption, leading the company's eventual global penetration. The Circle's core tenet is total transparency, regardless of one's social and public status. For example, the sea change camera was partly promoted in terms of its sous-villance potential. That is, it could facilitate civilian-level monitoring of the conducts of the police, military, and eventually politicians, making their every moment visible, therefore accountable. Now, how could we understand the Circle as an expression of the present? And should we? Remember, in Foucault's concept of the disciplinary society, the human subjects are habituated and shaped through several forms of disciplining institutions, such as the workplace, the school, and the prison. The people enforcing the discipline, such as workplace managers and school teachers, and their corresponding systems of conducts and regulations, are therefore situated within specific spatial confines. Since the middle of the 20th century, however, the gradual expansion of information technologies to every aspect of life began to change this spatially limited arrangement of discipline. Realized by this ubiquitous computing, the operations of discipline became despatialized or delinked from the material confines of architectures, such as the school or the office buildings. This new model was named by the philosopher Joe Deleuze in 1990 as control society, the core technology of which could be summed up as a sensorial and actionable database. This database performs what disciplining institutions, such as schools, were always already doing, which is the sorting of the human subjects according to a set of classifications and the treatment of each group by different actions. In a school context, for example, 
This may mean things like the A grade, the B grade, the failing grade, being absent or present in class, and so on. And by extension, one would experience the control society through being in or out of eligibility or access. Such as, if your grades are good enough to be eligible for a certain university, or which tier of healthcare you could access based on your national or company standings. Therefore, Going beyond the disciplining of the body toward productive ends, control shapes the body's possibility to varying zones. Or, from a different angle, the logic of control liquefies the solid disciplinary architectures into networks of checkpoints and enforcers. In the same paper, Deleuze cited his partner in crime Felix Scotari's fictional city, a city composed of sensor networks positioned at strategic checkpoints between zones, serving to identify the access privileges of people's electronic cards, letting some in and keeping others out. Building on Deleuze's control society concept, Haggerty and Erickson in 2000 observed the emergence of a form of identity composed entirely by data, such as school grades, criminal records, credit ratings, shopping records, likes, clicks, and so on. They named it Data Double, which is you as the ghost-like composition of your records and classifications in databases. Databases that sort and give people differential treatments accordingly. The security checkpoints in airports would be an example of this sorting. Or less obviously, the bank functions as a checkpoint for sorting people with higher credit ratings to be given mortgage. Here, the circle's true you platform could be seen as expressing the ambient anxiety of Data Double becoming a reality. That is, when databases are integrated and unified. Although it could theoretically happen, it isn't yet a reality. How could you find out? Just think of the Kafkaesque amount of documents you have to compile by yourself when you're applying for a job, school, or immigration. It is very much still up to the individuals to compile their own data doubles today. The exceptions being, of course, where you're under some criminal, civil, or tax investigations, in which case someone else will compile your dossiers for you, and in which case they're really out to get you. To conclude, I should note that the logic of control doesn't necessarily need ubiquitous computing to operate. An analog version of control infrastructure was darkly exemplified in apartheid South Africa, where cities were partitioned and access points were guarded by patrol officers, sorting population flows based on people's skins and passbooks. Some have suggested a deep historical relation between identity documentations and surveillance. Others will go back further arguing that empire and state building inherently demands the construction of legible and thus classifiable and surveyable identities for purposes of war, property rights, taxation, law enforcement, and so on. Or for social organization in general, such as enforcing traffic rules. If I have a thesis here, it would be that surveillance should not be perceived as an independent phenomenon, a view which will only generate endless paranoia. But it should be seen as subordinate to the question of classification and sensing, which is in turn subordinate to the question of organization. Institutional classification schemes are the key sites of political struggles in control societies, not surveillance. When fixated on surveillance as such, People will only be paranoid about being confirmed as deviants, instead of attending to the more important question of what are classified as deviants and why. Hi, I'm Ziao. Here I'd like to thank the first seven patrons of this channel. X2012, RMB, SBL55, FBDO, Amon A, Sam G, Alex B. Thank you.